Welcome to the Transform Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Cass Henry. I'm on a mission to help women live their best and happiest life. In order to do that, I believe we need to live with a lot less clutter in our homes and in our minds. So if this is you and you're looking to learn the best tips for transforming all areas of your life, then you have come to the right place. Thanks so much for being here. Now, let's get started. Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so grateful that you're listening. Today, I wanted to give you five quick tips for reducing clutter this Christmas. Quickly, I also wanted to say thank you if you attended my declutter, my five day declutter challenge back in November. Well, actually it was like the beginning of December. So I just wanna say thank you so much because your guys' engagement and enthusiasm and results that you got was absolutely phenomenal. I loved being a part of it and it gets me really excited about Um, when I'm launching my new program called Clutter to Calm. I was going to launch it in December and I'm so sorry that I didn't yet. I want to give you my 100,000% attention and I haven't been able to do that because I'm working so much with my one-to-one clients. So in the new year, I will be opening up the doors for enrollment and I know that I'll be able to carve out enough time so that I can give you and my in-person clients the utmost attention that you deserve because when we're decluttering and organizing our spaces, we do need a little bit of hand-holding. We do need a little bit of extra attention. We do need that support. And I want to be able to make sure that I can give that on both ends so that I'm not leaving you high and dry and I'm giving you the best experience that I can absolutely offer. So I promise you it will be coming out. We will start mid um, mid to end January and I will give you more details when the launch date will be. Um, but clutter to calm is a 12 week online group coaching program. We have 12 live calls together as well as you have access to the entire portal with pre-recorded videos, checklists, all the things to help you declutter, not just your physical space, but your internal space as well. Because I feel like our mental clutter is a huge contributor as well as our habits, whether it's our shopping habits or just putting things away. These are big contributors to our clutter. And so I believe that in order to create a strong foundation, we do need to address these things. So stay tuned for my Clutter to Calm program launching in the new year and let's dive in. So I'm really excited about Christmas. I recently changed my mindset around Christmas in the holidays, instead of being it just one day, I changed my mindset about around it being like the whole month of December because I would always get sad when, when December 25th would come and then it would go and it just happens so fast. So I'm like, why am I excited about something like all year round? I mean, obviously I was a little bit more excited when when I was a little kid, but I still love the holiday season. I love how excited my son gets um, and just all the things. So I recently changed my mindset into thinking that Christmas holidays is like a month long thing so I can kind of ease into it and I don't have to feel so rushed. So if you're feeling rushed and overwhelmed around the holiday season, I guess this tip is a little late for you, but maybe next year if you can think of the holiday seasons as being like a month long thing, you can just like ease into it and enjoy it and you know, make the feeling last longer and not feel so stressed and overwhelmed, then you can change the meaning of it. It doesn't have to just stay as one or two days. You know what I mean? Okay. So five tips for reducing clutter this Christmas. Um, so number one is, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have already done your Christmas shopping. I also have, um, and I'm sorry, I should have just put out this episode a while back, but it just came to me today. So I thought to put it out there anyways, you can always return stuff if you really want. And if you haven't done your Christmas shopping yet, then this came just in time. So tip number one is to give people things that you think they will need or use. So things that people always use are like toothbrushes, or maybe if you know someone um, takes a lot of baths, maybe you give them a bath bomb, or if a friend of yours goes to the spa a lot, or if your mom or friend or 
partner has been saying, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with the house, like maybe buy them somewhat to come in and help them clean or organize their space. Chocolate is always good. I know I'm a big chocolate candy lover. Uh, maybe a drink that you know that they'll enjoy, whether it's like an alcoholic beverage or something, or even like printing out a photo of, you know, one that they might have on Instagram or Facebook. What's their like profile photo? It's obviously something that means something to them if it's on their profile. Uh, print it out for them, put it in a nice frame, or get a photo book or calendar made. I know my older sister, she always collects photos from all of us each year, and she makes my mom a calendar every year, and that's like the best gift ever because she gets to look at it every single day for the whole year. Um, sometimes I get stuck here <laughs> when it comes to gift giving because I'm a practical gift giver. Even though I swear I could buy everything inside Marshalls and find someone to give it to you because everything is just so pretty and cute, and I just want to buy it all. But as I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, maybe I could give this mug to this person. It's like everyone has enough mugs everyone has enough clothes everyone has enough shoes everybody has enough stuff typically i'm speaking in general terms my job every day is to help people declutter stuff so i know this firsthand i know that a lot of people have exactly what they need we just buy more but i can't stand buying things for people and knowing that it might just sit in the closet forever and always and never get used i don't know i would just rather take them out for dinner or I don't know if they need a new toothbrush, buy them a new toothbrush, like buy their perfume that they use or deodorant or whatever it may be. Like I want people to actually use what I give them. Open it. I don't know what it is. Like I swear we've been conditioned to feel good when someone opens up a gift from us or we receive a gift of something that's like really pretty or cute or expensive or whatever it may be. But it's just that it's like a moment a, a, a moment in time that you feel good. And then what happens after that? Does it get used? Does it stay in, in a bag for the rest of the year? Does it get lost? Like, I swear I've been in homes right after the holidays, or even months after and it's like, Oh, what's that pile there? Oh, that's all stuff from Christmas. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm not saying this with judgment, because it happens in like, so many people's houses where it's like, or like we go to buy stuff at the store and I'm totally guilty of this too. Like I, um, I bought some new socks the other day and I haven't opened them all up, but I need to get rid of my old socks because I obviously bought new socks to replace my old socks. So they're kind of just sitting there until I do that. But what I notice so often is some people will buy stuff and they'll put it in like their craft room or their basement or the room that it's supposed to go into. And then they don't end up going back into that room for like months later and they open up these bags of brand new stuff and it's like, oh my gosh, I forgot I bought that. And so I feel like Christmas is kind of the same thing. Like we receive so many things and they go into like a bag that, you know, you collect and put all your Christmas items into and then you drop it into your room where it belongs and then you close the door and walk away. It's like, huh, well, that was a great feeling. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is maybe give people things that you know they'll use. Now, the thing about gift cards is I also wanted to give all my family members gift cards, but also the thing about gift cards is I also noticed that so many people never use gift cards. It's like we go to a store and we always forget the physical card. So maybe if there's a way to send like an e-gift card that they could like upload it onto their app, maybe it's like Starbucks or groceries or whatever it may be. Um, yeah. So I hope that that, you know, give people what you think they need or will use. And if you want to give them something that you know they would just totally freak out about, then by all means, enjoy the feeling that you both will receive from that moment and hope that they will continue to use it after that moment of time. <laughs> um, as well as like you can make like homemade gifts. I love making crafts. I mean, I used to. I haven't in a little while. I made a t-shirt the other day, a couple t-shirts, and that was fun. But you can always like make homemade crafts of things, you know, that people could hang on their Christmas tree because that happens all year round or hang on their walls or, 
you know, just get to know who they are if you don't already. Look around their space if you're able to and make a craft that you feel would go nice with their decor or something. Like there's so many ways to give a thoughtful gift. Um, it doesn't have to be quantity over quality. And also quality doesn't need to be measured by the cost either. So I was telling my son the other day, I'm like, dude, I bought you a wicked gift. You're going to freak out. Um, because he loves these, he loves slushies and snow cones. And so a client of mine, she had this really cool gadget where you, it's like this cup that you put in the freezer. And when you take it out of the freezer, you put like liquid in it. And after like five minutes, it turns into a slushy and I'm like, oh my gosh, my son is going to love that. So I bought it for him. And the other day he's like, mom, is that like thing that you got me for Christmas? Like that really wicked thing that you're talking about? Is that like a hoverboard? I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, dude, what's your definition of wicked? He's like, oh, I'm like big. I'm like, no. Nah. He's like, how big is it? And I like put up my hands. It's like the size of like, it's probably like the size of a hand and a half. He's like, oh. I'm like, dude, it's not a toy, but sort of. It's not electronics and it's not like insanely expensive. So you better like lower your expectations or change your meaning of wicked. Because that's the thing, like we all have expectations. And if you have an expectation of something for Christmas or holidays or even the way that you expect someone to respond to a gift that you give them, and they don't respond that way, or you don't get something that you expected you would get, you just set yourself up for feeling pretty awful. So when it comes to decluttering as well, if you can declutter some of the expectations you may have about certain things in your life, like things that you can't control, which are things that people do for you, and the way that people respond to things that you do for them, and just give to give or receive, you know, whatever it may be, I'm not sure. Everyone's going to have different, you know, meanings and criteria and things like that around what expectations mean and what you should and shouldn't have expectations around. But all I'm saying is manage your expectations this holiday season because you may be like super excited about a gift that you're about to give somebody and they may not get super excited like as much as you. And so you can still maintain that excited feeling that you have around giving it. Um, and I hope for you and for myself, cause I'm like, I'm excited to give the gifts that I've bought, you know, um, my loved ones because I put thought into it. Cause as I said, I'm a practical gift giver. <laughs> um, but if they're not like crazy excited about it, I can still maintain those feelings within my body of, I feel really excited and pumped that I got this. And I feel like, you know, even if they don't use it, well, I tried and I love the process of getting it and thinking about it. And if they don't love it, that's okay because I'm still super pumped about it. So yeah, that's, I guess that's a bonus tip is managing your expectations. Um, so number two is pre-buy organizing supplies for the items that you bought your family members or kids and buy a few extras in case you get some items too. Because when, when new items come into the home, Creating a home for every item as it comes in is extremely important because the worst thing that you can do is receive a bunch of stuff or buy a bunch of stuff and not know where to put it. And then it ends up in a closet or a bedroom or in the basement or it gets left in a bag and you come back like six years, six months or six years later. And it's like, oh, I forgot I had that. But if you have a bin with like maybe even like some pre-made labels, maybe that's going overboard. But if you have some labels and some bins already, after your kids open up the gifts, it's like, hey, just so you know, all that Lego you got, I actually have a bin for it. Here you go. And let's just slap on a label that says Lego. Or, oh, those new video games you got, I actually have like this cool basket to put them in. So be prepared buying gifts and giving gifts isn't just about giving the gifts you want to set these people up for success as well in their homes so that they can use it and find it and also be organized because our physical clutter creates mental clutter and we don't want to cause that for people so if you are like a big gift giver and you like to give a bunch of stuff please do them of great service if that even makes sense be of great service or <laughs> whatever and give them some organizing supplies along with the things that you buy them. 
it may look weird or I don't know, it may seem odd because if you've never done it before, but I think it's being super thoughtful in the moment and for these people's future because being organized is like the gift that keeps on giving and it's going to feel really good beyond just opening the box with new bins. <laughs> um, so number three is when you're putting away your Christmas decor. If there's something, no, that's the next tip. But when you are putting items away that you just got for Christmas, let's say you got new pots and pans or let's say you got new clothes. So when you're putting away these newer items, if you have older items that you got these newer items to replace, then get rid of the older items. And I know that feeling or, you know, the reasoning of, oh, well, this could now be my backup. Like this hair strainer or this new, um, or this, you know, hair blow dryer or this makeup or these socks or underwear, bed sheets or pots and pans. I know I just got new stuff, but these old ones can be my backup in case my new ones break. It's like, no, you don't need a backup for everything. Trust that what you got is going to be good for you and it's going to last long enough until maybe next year if you need a new one. But if we just kept all the time the things that we, you know, don't need anymore but are keeping just in case or for backup, we're going to end up having like way too much stuff. So this holiday season, give yourself the gift of letting your older items go. <laughs> Number four, which I was, I guess, obviously very excited about it because I tried to jump the gun too quickly, was when you're putting your decorations away. Let go of the items that you chose not to put up this year. Now, I understand that sometimes there's situations where we aren't in the right mindset or happy mindset or, you know, whatever it may be to decorate because life happens and it's so sad. Maybe there's like a death in the family or you're going through um, a period of bad mental health or you weren't feeling very happy this year to, you know, decorate because maybe you're alone this Christmas or holiday season. So if you didn't put it up this year, I'm not saying you have to get rid of it. Now, if you didn't have a moment of, you know, crisis or a moment of not feeling inspired to decorate this year and you put up everything except for a few items by choice because you just don't like them anymore then I invite you to get rid of them and most certainly if it's been more than two years then I would suggest to say goodbye because I don't know I swear they've come out with like really awesome fun cute pretty looking stuff inside Marshalls because I love Marshalls and Christmas decor looks so nice now I don't know about you but I always get way too overwhelmed by all the choices so although I love everything in there I usually end up buying like nothing um so but if you are the opposite of me and you end up you know replenishing or rebuying like all new Christmas ornaments and decorations and they were intended to replace the old stuff but you haven't replaced the old stuff yet then I invite you to get rid of the old Christmas stuff maybe if there's like certain ornaments that mean the world to you but you don't put up anymore you know okay have the conversation with yourself or if you really love them but you don't want them on your tree, maybe like put them at the back of the tree where nobody sees them. So at least they're like coming out of the box each year. You know what I mean? So say goodbye to your old, your old decorations that you've replaced with new Marshalls stuff. (laughs) And number five, my friends, is resist the Boxing Day deals. I know, I know this one is tough. So use this prompt. But do I really need this? Do I really need this? Like seriously, I was in the mall yesterday and I was in love with all the clothes and the shoes and the hats and all the things that I saw. I love them all, seriously, but I needed to get real with myself. There's always going to be items that I love and could buy. And when will that urge to buy pretty things ever go away? Probably never. Let's be honest. So I say, Cass, no, walk away and erase these things from your memory forever. You do not need them. And I'll be honest, I'm still thinking about all those awesome things and clothes. 
because I was like, oh, I just, I love all of these things and, but I don't need any more clothes. And if I do end up getting more clothes, then I definitely got to get rid of clothes. Because if I'm buying new clothes, it's because I'm not satisfied with the clothes that I already have, right? Wouldn't that make sense? That if you're buying new stuff, it's because you're not satisfied with what you already have. Or maybe you don't have enough of what you already have, but it's not usually the case. So I'm still thinking about those items. They're still clear in my mind, but I'm not going to go buy them because I'm going to resist the urge. Because also, like, things add up really fast. Like, a $20 thing here, a $30 thing here, a $50 thing here. It's already, like, I don't know, what is the math? Like, $110 or something? I don't think so. More like 90 70 I don't know. If you did the math before me, I can't even remember the numbers that I said. But send me a message because you're probably way better at math than I am. So, walk away and re- re- erase these things from your memory cast, what I said. You don't need them. And I'll be honest, each time I go into Marshalls or something like that, I now put my hand, I will physically put my hand up to the side of my face so that I block my eyes from seeing all the clothes because I have a thing for clothes. I just love them. But I also don't really like buying new clothes. I prefer buying used clothes. I prefer getting clothes for free or I prefer getting clothes on a deal. So I am a big deal person because I can't handle buying things brand new and I know I can get them at a deal. But this isn't about me. This is about you guys and resisting Boxing Day deals. So another thing about buying a bunch of new things is not just, you know, you don't don't need them probably. And it's going to cost you more money than you probably need to spend. But also where are all these things going to end up? Because I'll be honest, yesterday when I was leaving the mall, I had a feeling of like regret. And I had like this really fe- bad feeling of like shame. And I felt sad and I felt actually angry at myself because here I am window shopping. And I'm like, Cass, like how much time and money have you spent on buying stuff? Like, honestly. And when I look back, I'm like, I've spent so many weekends and vacation days and evenings on rearranging and buying and returning and organizing my stuff instead of doing other things that I could and should be doing. So that's a thing to think about. What are the feelings you get after you've spent days and hours shopping and rearranging and bringing them into your home and then feeling overwhelmed about all the new stuff in your house and then the arguments that may or may not come after that of oh my gosh your stuff is ever oh my gosh like this house is so dirty and cluttered and overwhelming oh my gosh i feel like i can't breathe because there's too much stuff oh my gosh we gotta hire cast to come help us take it all away which if you are at that point please do give me a call because i would love to help you and in the process of that i will teach you new skills to reduce your shopping in the future never to shame you never to blame you never to look down upon you because we are all there now i'm not saying to get down on yourself i'm not saying to induce shame or blame or guilt because that though all of those feelings just they suck And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me either. I just want to brush off those feelings because I don't want to feel those feelings anymore. But um, what I am saying is to get to know yourself, your shopping habits, the reasons and justifications that you say to yourself when you do and do not buy items and challenge yourself this Boxing Day. When you see sales, perhaps think about some items that you absolutely need that maybe you've been waiting for Boxing Day to buy And if it's not on the list, then it doesn't get bought. And also, if you're buying something to replace an older item, make sure to get rid of the items you're replacing it. Like I said before, you don't need to keep things as backup. Give yourself the gift of letting things go. Because in the long run, it's going to save you your mental health and it's just going to feel so much better. I hope that this episode has been helpful for you. 
and I hope that you enjoy this holiday season. I know I am day 20 now into my holiday seasons because like I said, I like to ease into it. I like to enjoy this whole time and not feel like I have to crunch everything into a couple of days. That just makes me feel so anxious and overwhelmed. And I already suffer from overwhelm and anxiety and I got ADHD. So if any of um, you guys are out there with ADHD, you know the feeling of feeling rushed. And I mean, you're probably a last minute person like me. It doesn't help to feel like you only have a couple days to get everything done. So I'm 20 days into my holiday season. <laughs> um, and we are five days left until Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. And so I hope that these five, six, seven tips, I don't even know how many I've given you now. <laughs> I hope that they've been helpful. And if they have been, please send me a message on Instagram or Facebook, wherever you um, hang out the most. You can find me at both places at Transformed Spaces. I'll put the link in the show notes. And if you like this podcast, please take a screenshot, save it, or post it to your Instagram stories and tag me. And also, if you would feel inclined to do so, please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other people find the podcast. And maybe other people are struggling with their mental or physical clutter, and this podcast could help them. I know this podcast, I ramble, and I get sassy and emotional, and I hope that you love every bit of it, because I am just showing up my true and honest self. And I think there's really no other way to be in this lifetime. So here's your permission to show up and be you, my friends. I'm sending you so much love and gratitude. Happy holidays. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.